Hi, I'm Kurt Mitchell, and welcome to the Essential Van Halen. This is uh, part two of the Van Halen guitar method. Um, there's a couple things I want to tell you. Number one, work these riffs up to speed. Don't start out trying to fly because you won't be able to do it. Two, if you want to sound like Eddie Van Halen, you have to play like Eddie Van Halen. It doesn't matter what kind of gear you're using. If he picked up your guitar and your amplifier, he'd sound just like Eddie Van Halen. So if you want to sound like him, you have to play like him. Uh, but I will show you the gear we're using so that you have a reference so as to what to, what to start from. Um, the other thing is uh, we're going to give you an A or open fifth string. We're tuned down a half a step throughout the whole tape. When he got Sammy in the band, they started tuning up a half a step, I guess, because they liked, because Sammy had a range that he could sing with. Uh, but we're gonna, just for, just so we can expedite the, the, uh, the lesson, we're going to keep it down a half a step. I'm going to give you an A open fifth string. I want you to tune to my A, then tune the rest of your guitar to that A, and then check with me again. Or if you have a tuner, go ahead and tune down half a step, and we should be together. Okay? So let's get on with it. Okay, let's check out some of the gear we're using. Let's start with the guitar, okay? Now, I'm using a copy of a Stratocaster, much like Eddie used to play before he um, went to the Music Man. Uh, it's got a humbucking pickup in the back. It's got a Floyd Rose clamp, which clamps the strings off up here and at the nut so that you can't go out of tune. This particular guitar that I'm playing has a pickup in the middle, but we're not going to be using that much. From here, let's go check out the amplifier we're going to be using. The amplifier I'm using is a 1969 Marshall Plexi head. This is the same amplifier that Eddie used on his first few albums before he went to the Saldanos and then the Peavies. Um, it's kind of rare and hard to find one of these amps, and I'm lucky to have it, but the thing is, is I've had a modification put in it, so it has a whole bunch of gain. He used to run his with a Variac and juice the voltage up real far and blow his tubes up all the time. But these amplifiers have this old EL34 tube crunchy sort of warm tone. I mean, it's distorted all the pieces, but it's still warm. And... Uh, from here, what I want to do is talk about some of the pedals we're going to be using, okay? I have a couple of stomp boxes that Eddie had. These aren't all the effects we're going to be using. We're also going to be using some digital chorusing through the mix board. But ba basically, these stomp boxes are what he used on the first album and the first few albums. And it gives you stuff like this. This one's a phaser. This one's a flanger. <laughs> That's about what we're using on this uh, particular lesson. Um, you're going to find in your book a diagram of the equipment a little more in detail, and you're also going to find some scales, the most common ones that Eddie used, and uh, and then still uses, and, and some chords, some of the co more common chords that he plays with, so that you can uh, have some visual patterns to play from and uh, play spontaneously from. So let's get on with it. Here's riff number one. Riff 
number six, turn on phase shifter. <laughs> Once again. Riff seven. One more time. Number eight. Once again. Riff number nine is in drop D tuning. We're going to take our E string, lower E string, and tune it down to D. Here you go, riff number nine. Here's the tuning for the low E. This is, this is E where it normally would be. Dropping it down to D. Okay, here we go. Riff number nine. Once again. Riff ten. One more time. Riff 11. Once again. Riff number 12, got your volume, uh, your volume turned almost all the way off on this. Once again. One more time. Riff 14B. Fourteen C. Once again. Riff fifteen. Once again. Riff 16. 
once again. Riff number 17. Once again. Riff 18. Once again. Riff 19. Riff 20. Once again. Riff 21. Once again. Um, these riffs are kind of difficult, I know. Uh, if you keep working on them, what you do is you work them up slowly. Um, take them bit by bit, work them up slowly and put them together and uh, then they'll come to you. Right now we're going to go to riff number 22, and I've turned the reverb off and turned a lot of the chorusing on to get this sound. So if you have some delay or reverb on your amp, turn it off, dry it up, and it sounds like this. Once again. Riff 23. One more time. Riff number 24. One more time. Riff number 25. Once again. Riff 26. One more time. Riff 27. One more time. Riff 28. One more time. Riff 
number 29. Once again. Once again. Rift 31. Once again. Rift 32. One more time. These tapping things that I'm showing you, you can go from string to string and and, uh, and use them. You'll see you can experiment and have, have a good time by sh changing the strings that you're playing on. Um, this is a good example of that. I'm going to show you. This is number 33. And uh, go ahead and change the strings on this one. Go to the D string and the E string and see what you can get out of it. Okay? <laughs> Once again. Riff number 34. One more time. Uh, we changed guitars for riff number 35. This is a Stratocaster. You'll notice down here that it has single coil pickups instead of a humbucking in the back. Okay, so let's get on with it. This is riff number 35. Once again. Riff number 36, you're going to, uh, as you pick the, the open A note and then hammer on the rest of them, you're going to take your palm, rest it on the bridge, and slide it up. You don't want to push too hard or it's going to end up sounding dead. It'll push up against the pickup. But you don't want to push too lightly or you won't hear the effect. And it's going to make harmonics as you slide down. Okay, this is riff number 36. again. Riff number 37, we're going to use our volume knob and fade in. Here we go. One more time. Here's Rift 38. One more time. Riff 
39. Once again. Riff 40. Turn your phase shifter on. Once again. Riff number 41 is done on acoustic guitar originally. We're going to do it on our electric. That sounds pretty cool this way. Here we go. 41. Once again. Riff 42. Once Once again. Riff 44. Once again. Riff 45. Once again. I have my E drop down to a D. My low E drop down to a D. This is uh, this is how this song goes. Pretty cool. Check it out. This is riff number 46. Once again. Riff 47. One more time. Hi, I'm Kurt Mitchell, and welcome to the Eddie Van Halen lesson. Uh, before we get started, I want to tell you about the gear that we're going to be using to get this sound. It's uh, the first record sound, I believe, was his best sound he ever got. I love that sound. It's huge, and uh, it's kind of hard to duplicate. And I got a couple of pieces of gear doing it. It's, I don't have a lot of stuff. You can get it with what you got. I'm sure you can get real close to it. But uh, let's start with the guitar. What I got going here is a Charvel, and. Uh, what I did, it's got a Floyd Rose clamp on it, which he didn't have on the first album, but it's real hard to keep those strats in tune if you don't have a clamp on them. But it gives it kind of a medley tone that you got to compensate for by turning the treble down a little bit. Um, I tore all the guts out of it, okay, because I, 
and it had EMGs in it, and I love EMGs, but I couldn't get the sound with EMGs, so I tore all the guts out of this guitar and put one pickup in it. Um, I took the front two pickups out, uh, I replaced the rear pickup with the Marzio double whammy. These two knobs aren't hooked up, this volume knob the only thing that's working, and the thing is, is I got this switch hooked up to where, since there's no other pickups in it, it only works in the down position. That gives you that, that gives you that Van Halen. Okay, from my guitar, I want to explain to you uh, what we're doing. We'll chase the guitar signal. A signal chain is a chain of events that occurs until you get the sound in your face through a stereo speaker, TV speaker, or whatever. So from my guitar, let's go down to our stomp boxes and uh, our amplifiers and the effects we're using to, to, to get this sound. The first thing I'm running to straight from my guitar is this Boss Digital Delay. Um, I believe what Eddie had from what I've read, and it's hard to believe some of those articles he comes up with, he was using a, a modified Univox Echoplex, which is an old tape delay. This happens to be a lot better than that, um, in that it has more times and more, it's got a longer delay and it, it does a lot more stuff, but irrelevantly, the main thing I'm trying to get across is this is going to my amplifier, okay? Now, usually when you record, all the effects are put on later, but he recorded most of his effects into his amplifier, except the reverb, which I'll show you in a minute, into his amplifier. His phasing, his flanging, and all that stuff was recorded uh, into his amp. Um, I'm not using a flange. My flange is going through a mixing console. I'll show you all that stuff in a minute. Let's get to this delay. This delay, I'm going to start and build a sound for you. i got a completely dry sound here. If I turn this delay on, I've got a little slap back going right now. It's got that, it's not quite as clean as a delay if, if you were to put it through the mixing console and through the microphone and all that and record it. Um, the next thing I'm going to use here is a DOD phase shifter. It's a little stomp box phase shifter, cheap piece of gear, but it's got that sound. To it that you can't get with nothing else. There's a couple of things that do it, but I haven't found many pieces of rack here or anything that do a phase shift, a cool phase shift. Uh, he was probably using an MXR. This is just exactly the same thing, and it's got this kind of a thing to it. He uses that on all of his solos, virtu virtually all of the solos on the first record, he uses that phase shifter. If we continue on over, this piece of gear is definitely something he wasn't using in the earlier days, but it's something that I'm using to transmit MIDI signals to my, to my rack gear, which we'll get to in a minute. It's a MIDI mitigator, and uh, all it does <coughs> is transmit uh, MIDI signals and change the rack gear in the effects rack, and this is kind of like the stuff he's using now. From here... I want to go up and continue on and show you where, what I'm doing to get the sound out of the Marshall. Now remember, the mitigator that you saw, the mitigator pedal board, is only changing MIDI programs. My guitar is going straight into the delay, straight into the phase shifter, and from the phase shifter, it's going into a parametric equalizer so that I can shape the sound of the guitar before it goes into the Marshall. And I want to show you that piece of gear right now. I got a TC1140 parametric equalizer preamp. Um, what that does, these are used for bass a lot, I believe. I just happen to stumble on the machine and uh, I really love it because I can shape, like I said, I run my guitar into it and I can almost have any guitar I want by changing the parameters on this, this machine. Um, it's got input gain and stuff. What I'm actually doing with the particular guitar that I'm playing, I have to take out some low end because this Marshall I'm playing, I'll show you in a minute, it's a basement head and I had to take all the low end off of it. So I had to take more low end out up around, oh, 100 hertz and about one octave worth. Um, this function here is set at zero, so it's not doing anything. Over here, I added about 10 dB of boost on uh, uh, at about an octave on like, I don't know, 100, uh, um, what is that? That's around 1K or 15K, which is 1,500 hertz. So I got some upper mids 
going into the amplifier, like I said, and the highs I'm not doing anything with at all. So all I'm really doing is adding like 1500 hertz and taking away, oh, what did I say, about 100 hertz, a lot of that woofy low end. From here I'm going over the Marshall, so let's take a look at what we're doing with the Marshall. I'm using a 1975 Marshall 100 watt base head, okay? And uh, I don't know if Eddie was using a base head or not. I seriously doubt it. I read somewhere that he was using some head that he bought in, down in LA, who knows. Um, this head has a lot of low end. I've had a modification done to this head whereby I have a double master volume. In other words, not only when I turn the amp up, am I choking off the preamp stage, but I'm also choking off the post or the output stage. And so this has a double master volume and it allows me to get quite a bit of uh, gain from this amp without murdering it, which Eddie does. He runs his on 10. He uses a Variac voltage amplifier, so he runs 140 or 50 volts. And he has to have so many modifications done to it just to get it to do that that he blows them up all the time and you just you can get a, you can get almost exactly that sound I'll show you you can get almost exactly that sound without murdering your amp this amp will run for me forever um, I'll blow tubes maybe two or three times every couple of years you know what I'm saying he blows tubes all the time he blows transformers and everything let's uh, take a look at what we're doing down down here my presence knob because I've had this amp modified is now my master volume okay I've got it jacked up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't have to be all that ridiculously loud because it's master volumed. Um, I got a speaker cap in the, in the other room that's mic'd up, so it can be any volume I want it to, but it doesn't have to be that loud. And this amp kind of sounds good, not that loud. My bass is on zero because it's a bass head and it has a woofy sort of a tone. You'll notice I was taking out some low end from my parametric EQ. Um, my mids are cranked all the way on 10. Trebles cranked all the way on 10. My first volume is up on about 7, close to 8. My second volume is up on the same thing. Now, these are gain knobs in the configuration that this amp has been put into. I'm running out of the parametric EQ that we just saw into, into channel number 2, okay, because it has a bassier, it has a warmer sound to it, okay. This, this channel has a treblier sound. Then I'm bridging it, okay, I'm taking it out of here because all this does is put these together when you plug in right here and running it back over to one. So I got both my volumes running as gain knobs. My presence knob is in the back of the amp and it's up on 10. From here, let's uh, take a look at our speaker miking system and then we'll take a look at our rack effects, reverbs and stuff like that and see what we're doing with the microphone. Now I have a cabinet just like this one, a 4x12 cabinet loaded with Celestians over in the amp room. And for, just for purposes of showing you what I'm doing, I'm going to show you with the one we got out here in the room, what we're doing with the mic. I got an SM58, a Shure Beta 58, which is a higher quality SM58. A 57 sounds almost identical to a 58. Uh, I got it tilted off axis. You'll notice here's the center of the cone. I got it tilted off axis so that it's aimed towards the center, not the very center, but this inner part of the cone, but right on the amplifier. See, it's almost touching. And, uh, and that's how we're getting our crunchy sound. In here just seems to be too buzzy, and any further away, you can't get any high end. You can experiment with microphones if you happen to be doing recording of your own to, uh, to get the sound that you enjoy. This has actually got a lot to do with this sound. The microphone's running into a mixing console, and uh, it's a 16-channel board. We don't really need to look at that right now because uh, doesn't. It's got a lot to do with our sound, but it doesn't. It, you know what I'm saying? If you're getting the sound out of an amp in your bedroom, then you need to just deal with the effects going into the amp. Um, from the microphone, I'm sending a couple of effects sends. We got. Uh, a TC Electronics 2290. For the first record sounds, I'm really going to be using this just for flanging and maybe a little bit of delay. This will do a whole bunch of stuff that uh, we're not going to be using it for. And uh, don't get intimidated by this rack. I'm only using a couple of pieces of gear in this rack for these sounds. Um, like I said, we're going to use a TC for flanging. From there, let's go down and look at uh, what we're using for reverb. 
Okay, here's our sound so far. If you'll recall, we have the delay. Well, this, this is dry. Here's with the delay when we need it. And there's uh, the phase shifter. From there, I want to show you, especially on the first album, there was a lot of reverb. It sound, that's what makes it sound so big. I'm using an SDR-1000, an Ibanez unit, and watch when I lift the bypass knob off of this. <laughs> Has a lot to do with the sound, and uh, it even gets bigger. I mean, on, the, on, on eruption, it's got this big... that great big huge sound to it. We're using a BBE Sonic Maximizer to, uh, to put in what all these effects and microphones and all this stuff takes out of it. This gives it some character. If I take it out for you, you'll see what that does. It adds its character back to it. Um, I'm taking everything after I'm all done with this and I'm running it to a Hush 2CX. The Hush 2CX is being used after the mixing console, after everything going into the recorder that we're using to record our videotape. What it's doing is it's shutting, you'll notice my microphone's on it. It's doing whatever I say, you see what I'm saying? And uh, it uh, takes all the, all the noise back out of the sound because like I said, it needs it needs stuff put back in, but then it makes a lot of noise. We're taking it all back out. So we're hushing everything down. Okay, before we get started, there's a couple things I want to explain to you. Um, in a major studio, 2448 track studio, they got 10 times this stuff, okay? And they're getting these sounds. What I'm doing is I'm taking the stuff that we got, and I'm trying to reproduce it as best I can for you. And uh, know that you'll never get it precise. It's never going to be exact. I'm sure that Eddie can't even play it the same way he did when he played it back then. That's 11 years ago. And, but it's still the best stuff in the world. Um, don't worry if you don't have any, any of this stuff. You take your guitar, you take your amplifier, you take, if you don't have an amplifier, you take whatever it is that you have to work with and learn the notes. Get the stuff under your hands, because it's, it's pretty exact. You just get the stuff under your hands and keep whacking away at it. You can build your own style. You can make, you can make yourself who you want to be. Uh, I really enjoy copying this particular uh, tape and album because it's my favorite. It's how I learned how to play the guitar, you know? And uh, don't worry about all this gear. It's intimidating looking. I know, I remember when I was never around any of it, I just wished I had it all. They're just tools to to help me get the sounds for you so you can hear kind of what they're doing. They're doing almost the same kind of thing on these sounds. Um, and uh, it sounds very close. You'll see when we get rolling in the tape. Don't worry about it if you don't have it. Get the notes in your hands. If you really do enjoy the sounds and you want to do them, this is kind of how they're doing it. <laughs> Take that slow. Now notice, I want you to notice something, that he takes those two notes and he pulls them off with his fingers. He's not picking them because he's got his whammy bar in his hand. Time. 
I ain't talking about love. I've changed the configuration of my signal chain a little bit. What I'm doing now is I'm uh, putting my guitar into my delay, into my phaser, into the TC Electronics 2290, the big digital delay that I showed you, said it did a bunch of things. Then I have a quadroverb, an Elisa's quadroverb running into like channel four. And when I need it, what I do is it's, it's continually sweeping a flange. And when I need it, I put it in. It either goes down or it goes up in the sweep. And I'm running the 2290 into my head now. And it's not running through the mixing board. See, the thing is, you can tell when he's running his effects through a mixer when it's being done on mixed down or when it's going through his amp. Because like the delay won't sound real crystal clear. Like if you listen to this delay, it's not quite the same as if it were digital. It would reproduce the sound exactly. And you hear it fade away kind of and it's not as distorted. And it gives it that sound. You can tell when it's being done. Okay, um, let me show you. I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get the camera here on the 2290 and and let you watch when I step on the button how the flange comes in and out. Okay. Now, if you watch, here's the 2290, right? And here's the quadroverb right here. And if you watch the lights on both of them, I don't know if you can see the lights. Hold on a second. We'll get the lights in there. If you can watch the lights on both of them. When the flange, you can even hear the noise of the flange. Okay, so it's like this. Okay, before we start, one more thing to explain. I have my delay set on a slap back. Okay, it's only coming back one time and it's not coming back very loud. If you're gonna turn the, if you have a delay, Turn the, the uh, what's it, the effect level knob way down, okay, so that it just barely comes back at you. And like I said, you can tell when it's not being, you wouldn't want to run this through the loop of your amp if you have an amp loop, okay, because you want it to go in and it, it doesn't come back as strong, so it's like way far away sounding. That's about it for this lesson. Remember to work these things up slowly because if you don't, you're going to end up injuring your hand. Start slow, work them up to speed. Um, at the end of the lesson, there's some tracks, Van Halen style tracks for you to, to practice with, to, to, to hone your own style. Take these riffs, get them in your hands, and then use them to incorporate them into your own style instead of just copying Eddie over and over again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it because we sure enjoyed making it. And until next time, I'll see you later.